A lot has changed since we last looked at Lumen Technologies. The company cut their dividend and year to date their stock price is down 66.5%. Right now, Lumen Technologies stock ticker LUMN trades for $1.80 per share. As little as a year ago, the company was trading for $11.5 per share, so their stock price has been cut by quite a bit. But should Lumen Technologies be thrown out from your investment consideration, or is it potentially on the bargain bin? We're going to try to figure out if its market price is a fair value or not. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Lumen Technologies. Then we'll give a final rating to the business. In the last five years, Lumen stock price has not fared well. It's down 90%. In the last 10 years, the company's stock price is down 95%. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, Lumen stock price is down 94% as well. This is a huge decline in the last two decades. Keep in mind the company did pay out quite a high dividend yield until recently. Lumen's dividend cuts were likely part of the reason its stock price has been crushed so much recently. Lumen trades just six cents above their 52 week low. The company is down $10 from their 52 week high. Nearly 14% of their shares are sold short. Right now, Lumen has under a $2 billion market cap, but the company has a lot of debt, so they have a nearly $21 billion enterprise value. But the burning question is, what's going on in Lumen's business that's making their stock perform like this? With 450,000 route miles of fiber, including over 35,000 route miles of subsea fiber connecting Europe, Asia, and Latin America, Lumen Technologies is one of the United States' largest telecommunications carriers serving global enterprises. Its merger with Level 3 in 2017 and divestiture of much of its incumbent local exchange carrier or its ILEC business in 2022 has shifted the company's operations away from its legacy consumer business and toward enterprises, which now account for nearly 80% of revenue. Lumen offers businesses a full menu of communication services, providing co-location and data center services, data transportation, and end-user phone and internet service. On the consumer side, Lumen provides broadband and phone service across 37 states, where it has 4.5 million broadband customers. Now we know how the company is reshaping itself, let's look at the financials. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return what its underlying business returns. These business returns are captured by return on capital. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark of 14% allows us to build in some margin of safety based on the quality of the business. Lumen has increased their returns on capital throughout this time. They earn 9.3% returns in their most recent fiscal year, so slightly above average. However, averaging out these last five years, Lumen only earns about 7.7% returns on capital throughout this time in a given year. This is just barely above the average company, but well below the benchmark we'd be looking for, meaning this is an X on metric number one for Lumen. Next, we're looking at the company's growth. Lumen has been shrinking itself throughout this time as they've been reshaping their business. Their revenues have declined by 27%. As a telecom business, their net incomes or their earnings are not going to be the most informative here, so we want to pay attention to their free cash flows. Their free cash flows have also declined including their last 12 months worth of numbers, their free cash flows are down 77%. This is a decline across the board for Lumen, and this is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. Lumen's earnings have been negative in four of these five years. Again, they're not the most telling for telecom businesses. Because of this, the important factor is really looking at their shares outstanding. Lumen has bought back 6% of their shares throughout this time, but with their sharp declines in their stock price, it's likely that even if they were buying back at below what an intrinsic value was for the business, that they would have been better served by holding this money in reserve and waiting to repurchase stock at a time like this. Even still, their earnings are negative throughout this time, so with that small amount of buybacks, this is still an X on metric number three. Metric number four, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth for Lumen. While the company does have positive free cash flows, they've been declining in all five of these years. They've seen significant declines in their last 12 months, and their shrinking free cash flows are outpacing their small share buybacks. This is another X on metric number four for Lumen Technologies. Things aren't starting off so hot. Right now, they're 0 for 4 on our analysis. Telecom businesses tend to be highly levered. 
During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow the company has produced in their last five years. Lumen has decreased their net debt position throughout this time. They've reduced this by a little more than $15 billion. Today, the company has about $19 billion in net debt. And in the last five years, Lumen has produced about $15 billion worth of free cash flow. That doesn't sound so bad for the company, and it actually compares well to other telecom businesses, but it's still an X here on metric number five. You'll also want to be aware that the company produced $876 million worth of free cash flow in their last 12 months. This is dramatically down from where they've been at and would make it very tough to support this debt. Paying down this debt could be a double-edged sword for Lumen because the company has a lot of fixed assets, which this is used to finance. It also depends what rates this debt is at, as paying down the debt may not be earning the highest return for shareholders, whereas returning capital to shareholders could provide more bang for its buck. With an increase in interest rates over this time, it's also going to be more expensive for Lumen to refinance this debt when it comes due, so it's really important to understand their debt profile here. A bonus metric before we try to give a value to Lumen, we're looking at the company's dividend profile. Lumen made headlines in late 2022 when they completely cut their dividend. While their dividend was supported in their last five fiscal years, it would not have been supported by their last 12 months worth of free cash flows. The management of the company decided to allocate this capital somewhere else. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. It can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, reinvest back into the business, make acquisitions, or pay down debt. You'll want to read through the company company's annual reports and their earnings call transcripts to get a better sense of management's approach to capital allocation. But at least for the time being, as they're reorganizing their business, Lumen has cut its dividends completely. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to their enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. If this is the case, this offers a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Lumen. Also, it could help Lumen from going 0 for 6 on our analysis. It's the first of two different ways we'll be using to value Lumen. Right now, Lumen has a $21 billion enterprise value. In the last five years, we learned the company earned $15 billion in free cash flow, meaning they produce about $3 billion in an average year. When that's divided by their $21 billion total enterprise value, that actually gives a 14% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. However, the company only produced $876 million worth of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When their last 12 months of free cash flow are divided by their enterprise value, we only get a 4.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So these two are split. We are looking at an average here, but it is worth noting that the company has seen declines in their free cash flows throughout this time. Coming in all the way at the end here, narrowly avoiding an embarrassing performance. This is actually a check on metric number six. This doesn't mean you just run out and go buy the business. This is not financial advice. Let's look at another way to come to a more concrete estimate of Lumen's fair value. To show where a business is at and where it could be in the future, we'd usually use a discounted cash flow model to estimate what a fair value is for the company. With Lumen, we run into some trouble here. If we were to grow their current free cash flows based off their historical growth rates and use those as assumptions for our model, if we add in their net worth, Lumen would actually have a negative fair value for that discount rate we'd be looking for of 15%. If we look at Lumen like many other businesses we've analyzed and use a three-year average of their free cash flows, it looks like Lumen would be significantly undervalued and that a fair value would be about $13.50 per share. Clearly, there's a huge difference between these two binary outcomes, where in one, the business is worth less than zero, and in the other, it looks like it's 90% undervalued. Lumen has a very low degree of business predictability, especially with its recent situation and its current free cash flows. Diving deeper into this business will really depend on where their free cash flows are at and if they can get back to their historical levels. Keep in mind this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before considering any investment. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to Lumen. But we have to address something first. We focused a lot on the quantitative by covering the numbers. But the qualitative factors of this business are just as important. 
starting with the qualitative factors supporting a potential long thesis. Number one, the explosion in data use, particularly mobile, could make fiber assets much more lucrative than they have historically been, and Lumen's fiber holdings place it in the top two or three in the United States. Number two, Lumen has further shifted its business away from the declining consumer and toward the enterprise, which leaves it with a better chance for future top-line growth. Number three, after selling much of its ILEC business, Lumen may be able to return to sales growth over the next few years rather than face a potential enduring decline. But this wouldn't be complete unless we covered both sides of the issue, looking at the qualitative factors supporting a potential short thesis. Number one, Lumen intends to ramp up investment in its business, which has been in secular decline. This could be a waste of cash that could instead go to shareholders or debt reduction. Number two, with a substantial amount of Lumen sales coming from landline phone and other legacy services, sales and profits will likely continue to decline secularly. Number three, continual advances in technology lead to to a potentially permanent deflationary environment for network infrastructure providers, and a surge in data use may not be enough to meaningfully offset it. Lumen also recently transitioned their CEO, and they divested one of their businesses for nearly $2 billion. Both of those happened toward the end of 2022. That offers a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Lumen Technologies, stock ticker LUMN, the company did not fare very well when looking at business quality metrics. However, the company avoided going 0 for 6 on our analysis based off of some of those valuation metrics that came in at the end, with a big change in its capital allocation approach and a potential hit or miss outcome based off both that discounted cash flow analysis and its free cash flow to enterprise value yields. Lumen looks like an interesting candidate for further research. This seems like it could be a high risk high reward opportunity. Historically, telecommunication businesses have a lot of assets and don't earn very high returns on capital. Overall, Lumen's likely a very difficult business to look at unless you have some special insight into the company, meaning it looks like a weak candidate for further research. Please don't let that discourage you if you're interested in the business. It's worth reiterating this is not financial advice. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share what business you want me to cover next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about this update on Lumen Technologies with me and have a great day.